So we're going to look at 108 and 109. In 108, you're given your velocity is 2t. You're asked to find your velocity in part a when your time is 1. So you plug 1 in, so you'd have 2 times 1, so you get 2. Then you're asked to find your velocity when you plug in 3, so it'd be 2 times 3, which is 6. And then you're asked for your finding your velocity when you plug in x. So it would be 2 times x. Now, you have your integral sign of your velocity, which is really the area underneath your curve from 0 to 6. Well, when you graph this, this is a diagonal line with a y-intercept of 0, so we end up getting a triangle. That's 6 units wide, so you go 1 half base times height. And then at 6, when you plug that in for your velocity, for your height, it would be 12 times 6, or I mean 2 times 6, which is 12. And so we end up getting 36. Now, you're asked to go ahead and do this again, but instead of going to 6, go from 0 to B. Well, it's still a triangle shape. Your base would go from 0 to B, so it would be 1 half times B. Your height, Whatever your height is right here is always double your input according to our rule because it's 2 times your input. So we get 2b. So in other words, your 2 and your 1 half cancel and you get b times b or b squared. Now, if you wanted, you could even say, well, what is your area even if you were going to go to t? And well, if you do that, it'd be t and then a 2t up here your area would be a t squared. Now that's going to uh, come into play at the end of 109. Question is, what does your area represent? Well, if you included units here, you'd have a 1 half times your 6 right here, which is seconds, times this, and I'm just giving you some units that make sense. They're not given units here. It'd be 12, uh, say, meters per second. So, in this case, your seconds drop, leaving you only with meters right here. So that means your units would be meters, which is distance. So the area underneath our curve is representing distance. And I chose to use meters per second in seconds up here. Down here, I chose to use feet per second. Either way, it's units for your velocity, but your area underneath your velocity curve is distance. Now, switching gears in 105 or 109, you're given your distance function. And so if we work this out, this should be time. This should be distance. Now you're not given units. Well, you could have this being like feet. You could have this being like seconds. It wouldn't make a difference. But sometimes units give you an idea of what's going on here. So then you're asked to find your derivative, which is the slope of your tangent line. So we have to do our IROC of this. So we'll take our limit. Subtract your original function, go t plus h, all squared, because it's your input squared beforehand. t plus h times t plus h. File that out, collect your like terms, your t squareds drop. You know, notice you have an h in common to everything. Take an h out of everything, and you get this. Now that we're no longer dividing by h, we can plug in h being 0. That knocks out that h, leaving us with just 2t. So this is your derivative, which is your slope predictor function that tells you your slope anywhere along the lines. So your derivative is 2t. You're looking for your derivative at 3. So plug in 3, and we will get 6. We're also looking for your slope of your tangent line, your derivative, when you plug in 1. So 2 times 1, or 2. And then we're looking for what it is when you plug in x. So it would be 2 times x. Now, if you're looking for your total distance after 6 seconds, 
you'd have to go back to your original distance function right here, plug in 6, and we get 36. Now hopefully you notice there's quite a few correlations between some of the answers in 109 and your answers in 108. Notice how the answers for part A up here match with your answers in part A down here. Your answer in part B up here matches with your answer down here. So what's really going on here? What's the relationship between 109 and 108? Well, the area underneath your velocity curve is your distance. So if you have your velocity being this, and you find your area underneath of it, you end up getting this. And we had showed that right up here in the blue. Or you can also look at the bottom one, that the slope of your tangent line under your distance or for your distance function is velocity. So the I rock of your distance is velocity and the units would support that because if we looked at our slope here, slope units is change in y over change in x. Our y units are feet, our x units down here are like seconds, which is units for velocity.